Hello, I'm Dr. Barbara Young, and welcome to the Transformation Success Television Network, and this is the Total Woman Show. You know, I want to talk to you out there. For many, many years, I have had a passion to empower women and men, not leaving out the men, but there are so many that I have come across who are disappointed, disillusioned, with despair, don't know where to go, but this is the show for you. What we truly want to do is not entertain you, but to really empower you, inform you, inspire you, and move you to action so that you walk away with something. It is our heart's desire to really, really move you and help you. You know, as an African proverb says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with others. So I invite you to go along with us today on a journey of discovery, a journey of hope, a journey to empower, to enrich your life. Our show today is gonna to be how to find a different self than who you thought you were. And I believe that Marianne Williamson said it best. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that needs, uh, that frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be? Brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous. Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. You are wonderful fearfully made in his image. Your playing small doesn't save the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't inspire you or won't be insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to shine. We were born to be great. That gift that is within all of us, it's not just in some people, it's in all of us. And it is our desire today to give you those tips and steps that are gonna help you and to liberate you and set you free. And I am happy today to be joined with my co-host, Miss Patty Cotton, Coach Allison, Miss Jody Tucker, and Lily Sanders. These are wonderful women who are all joining us today, who are fabulous, who are experts in their craft, who are coaches, transformational success agents. I would say we're all agents of change, and we're here to be with you. I'm going to share more about them a little later, but I really want you to know that this show is for you. And today, I want you to listen up, call your friends, tell them they got to listen to the show every week because we're going to bring you some great information that's going to help you. So thank you. And Lily, I want you to share today as we talk about how do I find that person who I thought I was. Lily Sanders. All right. Well, the first thing that we think about when we think of ourselves as a person is we identify ourselves yes. as something or uh, uh, a title of, of some sort, right. whether if we're speaking about women on the table, at the table here, it could be something that you do, uh, a position that you hold, or you're a mother, or you're uh, a daughter, a, a wife, all of the above, uh, a professional person. But when we disengage, should I say, uh, disidentified with mm -hmm. the labels, and just, let go of the ego, let go of all of the labels that are put on us. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ego begins to go away. We kind of surrender to everything that we say we are and that other people say that we are. And we take that away and we go within. And when we go within, mm -hmm. without any judgment, without any labels, uh, without any judgment that we put on ourselves or with, without any judgment that someone else puts on us, without any labels that someone puts on us, and this, I'm, I'm including all of the positive labels. So we're putting that all mm -hmm. aside and just looking internally. We have to have that moment where we connect in our heart center 
And in that center is where we gain wisdom because in silence we hear the voice of God. And so in that silence and in that listening to God's voice, we find the essence of who we are. And it's only in this internal work that we find this. And so whether you're you know, a, a teacher or the president of the United States, what really, the only thing that really is eternal and what really matters and is going to make a difference in the world is living through the essence of who we are. But Lily, you know, many of us know that when we start talking about internal work, mm -hmm. so many people are, are afraid to, yeah. to look mm -hmm. internally. I mean, I'm scared. I mean, because it's, it's like almost scared of what you may find. Because we, we've taken in so much of what other people say about us. I'm not good enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm too fat. How many times have you heard women say, I grew up, I was chubby. I, I was this. And, you know, well, you know, I was blonde and blue-eyed. You know, pardon me, Joey. You know, <laughs> and, and, and people thought I, I didn't have, you know, the intellect, you know, according. And so, how do you how do you come to that point where where the, the internal work starts? What what has to happen, or do you think something has to happen? Well, that's where it becomes really beautiful because when you're letting go of all of those things and names and labels that are put on you, and you're just internally working, and you know, there's a difference. Um, I call it meditation. Uh, it's been it's a tradition throughout the entire world. Um, it's meditation is going inward, and prayer is going outward. Prayer is speaking to God, mm. uh, you know, and and meditation is allowing yourself to listen to God. So and and it's it's it has nothing to do with religion or idolatry or uh, a, a doctrine. It's just listening to spirit that is in here somewhere. So, you know, for you and I, we may say God, someone just may say spirit, universe, source. But the point is, we all have to get to that point. We all have to do our internal work. And so once we let this go, the actual, that manifestation of, actually comes through with, with your creativity, and, and inspiration and your enthusiasm in life and it's look there's not a there is not a thing in the world that is going to bring you the joy externally but, but after really, you find it here how did you find that okay. I found it yeah okay so I found it because it's, you know some of my past you know I come from a domestically violent uh, upbringing which spun me into uh, two domestically violent marriages. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so um, that became a conditioned mind, mind set. Uh, and I'll, just to be very quick about it, is that what happens is you begin to believe that you have, that you have no worth. You begin to believe that you really, you know, you're not deserving of, of dignity and, and, and respect. When you go internally, what I did with myself was I wanted to die. And when I thought that I wanted to die, I thought, well, what wanted to die in me was I realized the person because I kept telling myself mm -hmm. my spirit is dead. And to me, I think it was Norman Cousins that says um, that there's nothing more tragic than, and, than living life when, uh, when your spirit is already dead. And I'm probably getting that, that quote mixed up because we're, we're all doing this in the moment without a script, by the way. <laughs> so, but the point is that when something inside of you dies while you're alive, that's the most tragic thing it is. that you can actually, and, and that's when the thinking mind tells you, I just want to kill myself. But in reality, you just want to kill the ego in yourself and the world and what is put on you. And once you, once you die to self, then the real essence of you, the spirit or the God in you, 
lives through you. And that's also biblical, die to self. You know, Jesus was, always said, die about, to I self. I was about to say that. Yeah, and now, there's a, Dying to self yeah. is, is critical. Mm -hmm. It's critical, and there's a universal message for that. There's also an ancient um, uh, spiritual dictum that also says um, uh, something to the effect of dying to self, and it talks about the death of the ego and then coming into the essence of who you are, which is God. But you know, I want to say something too here, and, and Patty, I want you to jump, jump in and join. You know, when we start talking about the ego with, with a lot of women, where do you think our egos are? What do you think most of us are? Because I'm telling I, you. I will tell you that I believe that the ego is an accumulation of the listening to other voices and having the world tell you who you are. Yeah. Yes, it is. It, yeah. And, and so, so whether, and Lily's making an excellent point, you have to come to a pain point mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. you want to change. Mm -hmm. And you asked that question earlier, Dr. Barbara. You said, you know, how does one get there? Right. And the way one gets there is the pain has to become so great. Mm -hmm. Yes. that you want to change. Whether that's in a domestic, domestically violent situation, I've been in one myself, or whether you're walking around in, with an imposter syndrome because you're not sure you're as great as they say you are, right. and somebody's going to find out sometimes. Yeah. 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 I'm, you know, I'm not as good as they are. Does that sound, <laughs> Jody, I don't that's know the, I That's the ego of yeah. fear. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what if? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't know about your experience, Jody. Well, I, I, you know, it's a good point, the whole idea of listening to other people, because I um, encountered a really great speaker uh, and coach, his name is Rex Crane, and he asked me a really deep question mm -hmm. that I couldn't answer. As a professional that I thought I, I had arrived, I should know who I am, right? right, right. And, and he said, I want you to tell me who you are without telling me what you do. Uh -huh. yes. And I couldn't answer that question because I had been so used to entering the room and credentialing myself right. and saying, this is who I am, this is what I'm capable of, this is what I'm here to do. And I'd never really thought about what's the identity of me right. that is not based on these external validations mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is what you say and this is what I did here and this is my accomplishment over here mm -hmm. and so these are my credentials and all of that if you, if you take all that away who am I really and I think that that starts very early in childhood that the person that you wanted to be at eight, 10 years old, that's where identity first starts to form. Right. And so when you think about that, you know, what did you want to be as an eight year old before everybody told you that you couldn't do it? You know, and, and, and what are the things you wanted to accomplish? And, and we had some pretty great dreams, didn't we? We, we? we thought we were going to be, you know, the Queen of England, or we were going to, uh, I was going to, I wanted to be Wonder Woman, quite frankly. So you know, I was going to fly. You know, and I was going to do all these great things before I realized, you know, there's this thing called gravity. You really can't do that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we have this, these great identities. And, and I'm convinced that at a certain point in our careers, men and women, mm -hmm. we have to sort of go back to that identity and say, am I living that mm -hmm. for real? Absolutely. Like, I may not, I may not fly, mm -hmm. uh, but what's the theme that the call in my life from mm -hmm. that early moment until now? Mm -hmm. And I think that disillusionment that hits so many professionals when they get into a certain point in their careers, or because I'm a business coach, business people who are looking at, you know, how do I brand who I am? Right. That's a little scary, right, right Dr. Yeah, Burke? That's yes. a little scary. To put yourself out there, out there like that, you have to be able to pull that theme forward and say, yes. this is the call on my life. And so the various places I've applied that all make sense. Mm -hmm. And when we mm -hmm. step out of that identity, that's when we're truly unhappy. Yeah. When we start listening to those voices right. that tell mm -hmm. us, no, but wait a second, you were supposed to do this and this and this. I mean, I'm the product of a, a wonderfully uh, successful uh, businesswoman or professional woman that was my mother. Mm -hmm. And so there were certain expectations she had of me. And at a certain mm -hmm. point, I had to say, no, wait a minute. What's the legacy that I want to build? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's her voice. That's her legacy. What's mine? Yeah, what, right. yeah. Yeah. And then to be able to yeah. say, this is the call. And, and so what I ask business people to do, especially when I do the geeky stuff, like writing business plans, mm -hmm. is... Can you tell me who you are without telling me what you do? Because that's mm -hmm. the only way we're going to get the thing you are meant to do out there Beautiful. in the market. Beautiful. Otherwise, yep. otherwise yeah. you're just like everybody else. And who yes. wants that? Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, the imposter syndrome, I think there's a clone yes. syndrome too, right? right. right. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh all that clone syndrome yeah. is going on strong yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my how to duplicate that's something that's out else. there. Yeah. 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 How many people have told you, I'm going to be just like you? That's not flattering to me. No, you know, so say, oh, I'm gonna be like you, Doctor. I, I hope nobody's out there saying that. I want to be like you, Doctor. I said, no, you want to be like yourself. Yeah, exactly. I, I really yeah. agree. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. And you know, 
it, it's funny because and when you were saying, you know, with pain, mm -hmm. um, there's, there's a, a huge transformation when you go from pain and suffering into peace. Mm -hmm. And um, that bridge is really only gapped in, when you go beneath the layers of all the identities that you put on yourself, even mm -hmm. from childhood. Because even as a child, and I, I might actually um, challenge that a little bit because when we have children and we raise our children, our babies, what's the first thing that they do? First, it's a, you know, a me, you know, you know, me do that, me want that. And then they learn their name and they say their name, you know, uh, mm -hmm. we want that. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, it's not toy, it's my toy. So they're already learning how to identify with things. And of course, you can't raise a child, no, no, nothing is yours, it's all part of the universe. Like, you can't, you can't, you can't of course, of course they're going nice. to identify, yeah. this is yeah. what we do, right. you know? I'm going to try that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But if we take the my out of everything, mm -hmm. as adults speaking here, yes. you know, for the, for the purpose of, of trying to, you know, bring awareness at, mm -hmm. on this show, if we take the my out of everything, we're taking the ego out of everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, my life. It's not my certification. It's not my, you know, bachelor degree. It's not my PhD. It is part, it's important, and it's part of all the things of form of this world. But when you take that away, there's the formless. And what's left, what's there, is the essence of you. Mm -hmm. And that is where you do your, your intuitive work, your right. creative work, and who right. you are. You know, what you're so passionate about from birth is what you do now. And that's because you've come to this, you have that connection in here, you know. And many people don't, you know, they might not have identified with anything good in their childhood. So um, I'd like to inspire anyone that's watching the show that sometimes when you've suffered enough, you're ready to take the shift. So when you've really suffered enough, and that's how I felt in my case, I was ready to take the shift because I decided to love myself. And I decided that I was a woman of God. Mm -hmm. I was a daughter of God. And that I, you know, loved myself and I'm going to walk around with my chin up in grace and dignity. And you bring up a very good point. Mm -hmm. And that point is love is a choice. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, deciding to love yourself. Mm -hmm. um, thinking, yeah. I, I, and, I, and I want you guys to chime in on this because I've often thought of all of the experiences and whether they're negative experiences and they're positive experiences because life happens and life yes. is a journey and along this journey stuff happens. But it's how you're able to process that stuff. Mm -hmm. And as maybe I'm looking on the the other side here of, you know, longevity and being around a while, but looking at all of these experiences, painful as they yes. were, were for me to take a look at what does this all mean? Mm -hmm. How, what am I to learn from this? So I'm asking the viewers out there, as you listen to the story, because these are our stories and you may disagree or you may not agree, but they are stories and this is our moment and this is our time mm -hmm. and we want to be able to share that with you. Mm -hmm. So it is a journey, but it's a choice. Mm -hmm. And I guess trying, for me, my passion has always been, if I could just shape a lot of women and men, that you have so much power. You have the power mm -hmm. to do it. And these painful situations that are occurring, and sometimes it's like we keep learning the lessons. If you don't learn the lesson and go to the next grade, guess what? You have to learn, you have to go through the lesson. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> And then it's like, you got to go through it again. <laughs> and I went through it. A couple of them, I said, you know what? I don't want to go through this any again. So yeah. let me learn what I'm supposed to learn from this and move on to yeah. the next. Yeah. No, yeah. because the understanding happens in stages. So just like anything, you can't learn all of it all at once. No. Yeah. And no. so just Good like point. when you talked about, you know, when you're younger, you have your idea, idea of who you are. And um, I came to the States when I was 13. I was born in Seoul, South Korea. And we, uh, my family and I moved to Provo, Utah. And there were not a lot of 
Koreans there, not for sure. Not. <laughs> and not a lot of foreigners, really. At, yeah. Or, you know, yeah. it, it was very, uh, I was kind of a stranger yeah. there in that setting. And I did, you know, I did not speak English. My parents did, but the three of us kids did not. And, uh, and that was the first time that I actually realized I am not who I thought I was. Yeah. Because when I was in Korea, yeah. I was a I was a best student. I was popular, yeah. and everybody wanted to be my friends. And I came to Utah, and nobody wanted to talk to me. And and, and if somebody did, or they would tell a joke because it was really awkward and stuff. I didn't understand the joke, mm -hmm. and so it was kind of even more awkward. So they would stop talking to me. I was a foreigner who wore funny clothes and ate lunch alone. Oh, and at God. the age of thirteen, and I started high school at that age. Um, I realized for the first time, this is awful, mm -hmm. you know, but, and I have to admit, at that, at that time, I didn't understand this whole, you know, growth and, you know, transformation, finding out my identity, I wasn't there, but at that time, my understanding was, I gotta survive this, yes. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what is it gonna take, what is it gonna take for me to survive this, because, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if I think I have it or not, I have to have it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so if it's already not in me now, it has to be. Otherwise, you know, I, I had to learn English, you know? And, and, I, <laughs> and I made good friends and I, it, but the, the first year, that first year still remains as one of the most difficult years of my life. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. you know, tender yeah. age and yeah. it just really learning that lesson very, very quickly at that young right. age. Right. Right. And I had to realize, okay, I guess I'm, uh, this is, there's more to it than this, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. looking back, I'm glad I went through it, but I have to admit, those lessons are pretty tough. Yeah, yeah. You that's know? true. Well, you feel like you don't belong, because yeah. on the bottom of Maslow's hierarchy, we used to think, and we were taught, that it was food, sex, and sleep. Now we the know, water, air. Right? <laughs> water, air. Now we know that it's belonging. Yeah. 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 It has, it it has shifted, anger. It's shifted mm -hmm. and that's why kids join gangs when they know they may not be safe. There, we have to understand where we belong. And, and in listening to all of us, I think what we're saying, synthesizing, is that you know, we need to drop the voices and, and give ourselves labels as to mm -hmm. who we are, but we need to understand where we belong in the larger picture. Mm -hmm. This is not about us, it's about a collective we. But we mustn't forget the essence of us, because as Jody said, what are our themes? What do we bring to the table? Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe we all have one purpose. We really do. Mm -hmm. It is to rise to be our very best and give back to the world, yes. mm -hmm. to acknowledge his love. Yes. How we do that yeah. is it's our ours. natural themes, right. our gifts and our talents. Right. And where do we belong? Which iris <coughs> in the Monet painting are you? Yeah. And so that, that pain like of that not being That's a great image. is just, yeah. yeah, that really that really makes my heart ache. Because as a 13-year-old, that had to be incredibly yeah. hurtful. Yeah. 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 But I have to admit that I didn't get picked on a lot at school or something like that. But I mean, it, the, but the it was very subtle. Yeah. The you know, the isolation, yeah. And, yeah, and the way the, I guess the vibe, it was very subtle, mm -hmm. but you feel that, you know? Yeah. And, and I remember one time my brother got beat up at school. He was 11 when he came. Oh. And I, I just could not believe it, you know? Yeah. Was, yeah. Mm. yeah. What, what, what's going on here? You know, it's like, wait. Oh. Why don't they nice to yeah. us, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But it no, but it, um, it does happen. And, Which and it made you strong. Yeah. And it probably helped you evolve mm -hmm. into learning the language mm -hmm. quicker. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. definitely. Right? Starting yeah. to learn the culture quicker. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah. and one, one uh, again, a theme again, I heard, you know, I have to get through this. I yes. have to I heard to say that. No, I heard to say the choice. Yes. The choice. Yes. You know, yeah. so for viewers out there, you got choices. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you don't let anybody else yeah. take that choice away from you yeah. because you can make that choice, that decision. Absolutely. You know, I feel that maybe there's somebody out there that may be thinking about suicide. I don't know, I just feel that. Mm -hmm. But I want you to know that there's hope for you. God loves you. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Your life is very valuable and God wants to use you. There's a purpose and a plan for your life. Mm -hmm. And so as we talk about today, be encouraged because all of us have yes. our stories and we bring, we're bringing our stories mm -hmm. to you to share with you, to let you know, no, it hasn't been easy for any of us. And as we share more on the Total Woman Show, as you get to listen to us, we're gonna bring more topics to you that are very provocative, very interesting, but from our own stories that we all share. Mm -hmm. 
And that's the beauty of it. I'm so glad I got you guys. I am so really happy. You guys are so wonderful. You really, really are. And God has just blessed us to bring us together with the synergy and the energy. And I think you so said it so eloquently. What iris do you want to be mm. in the morning painting? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. that is so beautiful. I just love that. So any last comments that you want to make? As we, you know, uh, Dr. Barber, I think all of us probably have at least one tip or tool that we can give the viewers great. to take away. That's and fantastic. And uh, I don't know, Lily. I, I was going to spin yeah. off of uh, what you were just saying and change, and what you were saying, just to underscore, change is definitely, it's, look, things happen in life and it's an inevitable, you know, process, mm -hmm. you know, to, mm -hmm. that's going to happen in life. And we're going to use that. How are you going to, what are you going to do with that change in an experience or a circumstance? And how we can use right. that to grow. Because if we didn't have challenges, look, life is not meant to be perfect. If we did not have challenges in life, we would never evolve True. as a person True. and as uh, it, it, uh, actually globally. Right. You know, we right. need to evolve globally. Yes. You know? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to. I just want to say too, Tori. If something you know happens to you out there, look at it from what I'd say change your hat, or look at it from a different perspective, and say, what am I to learn from this experience? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The second thing I would say is be patient because some things just have to work out and give them time yes. mm -hmm. for them to work out because things will get better. And I have a slogan I always say: be better and not bitter. Yes, mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And also, during this healing period, you're going to do some reflective thinking, I know, that it's your choice. Mm -hmm. You can choose to heal, or you can choose to stay in that rut. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, you don't want to stay there. Mm -hmm. You want to move. You definitely want to move. And regard problems and challenges, as I know many of us have, as stepping stones to get me to my yes, next absolutely. level. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. too high. Because one of the things I think that I find is lacking with so many people is joy. The joy, the joie la vie, yes. the joy of life. And that's what's so important. So what we want to bring to you is some joy. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> some yes. joy and laughter, because laughter is good for the soul. Yes. So we're going to have a lot of fun on the show. And as we close the show today, I want to tell you this. We love you. And we want to help you. We know we can. And there's an opportunity for you to be a participant in this as well. Mm -hmm. Because I want you to write to us. I want you to give your feedback to us. You can write me at Dr. B, TransformationSuccessTV.com. I gotta get it right. <laughs> Again, that's Dr. B at TransformationSuccessTV.com. We all wanna hear from you. Your yes. comments, your feedback, even some of your challenges or topics that you'd like us to cover, we want you to be engaged with us as we're going to engage with you. And next week, oh, do we have a show for you. Oh, my goodness. It's called Grace on the Other Side of Disaster. Of Disaster. <laughs> Grace on the Other Side of Disaster. You don't want to miss that show. So to my co-host, Miss Patty, Coach Allison, Jody, you know I'm not going to say the word Tucker. <laughs> thank you. I'm <laughs> Lily Sanders. Thank you guys so much. And thank you for being with us. And we'll see you next week. And God bless you. This is Dr. B signing off.